Why is it that it seems when you go down this path of self-development and wanting to transform and change yourself that life starts giving you negative outcomes or giving you more of what you don't want? Does it mean that this stuff just doesn't work and we don't really have influence over our reality or is there something more to it that we're not seeing? Well, in this video, I'm going to be going over why life presents negative outcomes in your life in general, why it will do this even when you are seemingly doing the right things consistently, and most importantly, what you can do in the face of this to start creating reality in the ways that you want, and so you can receive more positive outcomes in your life. And this is an area that trips up many people because of a lack of understanding, not only in why this is happening, but what to do when it is occurring so that you can change the outcomes. So I highly recommend that you really pay attention here. Uh, you watch this video all the way through, take notes, even come back to it if you need to, because there's gonna be some stuff in here that can be the missing key for you when it comes to reality creation. This step is so crucial and really is the one that is a stumbling block for most. So without further ado, let's jump in to the video. So to understand this, we need to first realize that there are different kinds of what we call negativity or what we label negativity or chaos or whatever else. So let's go over the first kind, and this is the most common kind and the one most people experience. And this is kind of just regular negativity. And there's a very simple reason why a lot of people experience this or why someone who is experiencing this is, and it's because they're tuned into negativity more often than not. You see, we are always transmitting out a signal or a certain level of energy that kind of corresponds to a certain frequency. Uh, the best analogy I can really give you is imagine you are like a radio station that is tuned into a certain station. Now, you are only going to get songs uh, or results that exist on that station. If you are on the station of whatever it is, and let's say it's 99.9, .9, but you want what's on 102.5, you cannot have what's on 102.5 unless you shift to that station. And let's say 99.9 .9 is the negativity channel. A lot of people are tuned into this and their frequency stays there, so they continually bring more negative circumstances, events, people, etc., into their life because they are tuned into that station. Then you can look at people who are tuned into a more positive station that receive more positive things in their life in general because what you put out there is what you're going to attract in your life. Now to expand this even more, imagine you have two balls of energy in your life. And this is actually, uh, to a certain degree, very, very true. You have a negative ball of energy and a positive ball of energy. Most people's ball of energy in their life is primarily negative. And this ball of energy has a gravity to it. It attracts things to it. And so the bigger it is, the more it's going to attract what it is. And so most people are walking around with a massive ball of negative energy that they continue to feed with negativity that they can continue to feed with negative thoughts, negative things they say, negative actions, um, negative emotions that are lower on the consciousness scale, we could say, like fear and guilt and shame. And so this ball becomes bigger and bigger in their life. It gains more gravity, more pulling power, but can only pull things of a like kind, so it pulls mainly negative things in. Now on the op uh, opposite end of the spectrum, if you spent most of your time genuinely thinking positive, uh, positive thoughts, uh, speaking from positivity, acting from that place, of inspired action and feeling higher levels of consciousness, you would have a massive positive energy ball in your life that would do the same thing, attracting more of that to you. Now there's something really important to understand about negativity and positivity in your life, and that is it is simply feedback. The reason someone is experiencing negativity when they're being incredibly negative is it's feedback to really almost try and push them back in the direction of higher levels of consciousness, which is ultimately, again, this is beyond this video, what the universe, God, the all, where we came from is aiming to have us do. And that's why when you spend a lot of time in lower levels of consciousness, the feedback gets louder and louder and louder. Maybe you've experienced something like that where you've continued to ignore the feedback life has given you and then it just gets louder and louder and more intense and more intense until you make a change or until you address what is actually happening. And so that negativity is simply feedback that you need to shift, that you need to change. That is, if you want to start living the life you want to live, which deep down somewhere within most people, they do have that desire, but many give it up because they don't know how or they their experiences has been different so far, but that's still deep within everyone. And so life is still trying to get you down that path. 
Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, positive is still feedback in that, hey, you're actually heading down the right path or one that's more in alignment. When you're getting positive feedback, it is telling you you are in alignment, you're in that flow, you're in that place where you are tapping into these abilities, creating reality very effectively, et cetera, et cetera. Keep doing what you're doing, keep expanding on it, keep going in this way. They both serve as feedback mechanisms just in different ways. And so general negativity, this is the purpose of it, and this is also why people experience it. You can't be tuned into the negativity station for so long and expect positive outcomes. You have to take the feedback of being on that station, realize I don't want to be on this station anymore, and start to make the shift. I just want to mention that people who experience kind of the first level of negativity I've been talking about mostly here, where it's because they're tuned into negativity all the time, are what's in what's called a to me level of consciousness. To me level of consciousness is essentially victim mode. They see themselves as victimized by life. They see themselves as someone who's kind of being slapped around by life and life is unfair and other people have it better like I don't and all this kind of stuff. And this is one of the most disempowering states to be in that keeps you cut off from what you truly are and your actual abilities of what you can do while you're here. You are never going to be able to create your reality when in this state, which is why a lot of people in this state think a lot of this stuff is nonsense because they're not even close to being in a place yet where they can utilize this, right? You have to kind of tip the scale more on the other side before you can use this effectively. However, this can shift very quickly when you do particular things that I've gone over on this channel or will continue to mention in this video later on. But this is different than the next one we're going to talk about. But just when you think of like general negativity and people in the state think to me, it is victimhood, it is victim mode, and it is if you want to create your reality and live the life you want to live, and we're going to go over this a little bit later on um, how you can move past this, you can't be in this state. It is impossible to live the life you want or to change in the ways you want if you remain in the to me level of living. So let's talk about this second kind of negativity, so to speak. Um, and we'll just call it chaos, because I think I like that term a little bit more. It's mislabeled as chaos, but I think chaos kind of represents it a little bit better. So let's go over to chaos that kind of happens, um, and the storm that kind of comes up when you're first going down this. And it doesn't, it's not just when you first go down it. This still happens to me and uh, people who've been doing this for a while. The chaos starts to come up. The difference is we understand why it's there and what to do in the face of it so that it doesn't derail us. And you're going to be learning that today as well. But let's say the chaos comes up, you're applying the reality creation principle, you're changing many things in your life, you're tuning to a new station and you're able to stay there more often. Maybe you fall off, but you get right back on the horse and you're right back at it. And you're really dilig uh, diligently doing this work. Maybe you've even invested in a coach or a program or something to keep you accountable and keep you in the room so that you're not going back and forth and wasting time and getting frustrated and getting fed up. Maybe you're even doing it at that level and then this chaos inevitably comes up. Well, why is that? Well, there's actually a couple of things going on when you're experiencing this level of chaos. The first thing you might be experiencing is simply a clearing out process. The other thing you may be experiencing is what we call the law of continuity, and I'm going to explain both how they play out and how to recognize when this is happening. You see, if you're vibrating at a certain place in your life, you are drawing in certain opportunities and physical circumstances and so on that match whatever it is that you are vibrating out. So let's say now you have learned these principles, you have gained high your levels of awarenesses, you've had new experiences that kind of move you up the scale to a new frequency. Well, the things in your life are still attuned to that older level of frequency, even though you're now on a new level of frequency. Now, what happens to most people when this occurs is chaos has to come through because it has to remove some of the old things in your life that were attuned to the old frequency, not this new one. To allow the new things to come in, that are attuned to this new frequency that you are on. For example, let's say in the past, you lived primarily a life of fear, and you were always worried, you were always anxious, you were always overthinking. Let's say you just overthought everything, you catastrophized everything, and let's say that's how you lived. You would have attracted circumstances and people and opportunities to feel fear more often, meaning there would have been things that happened in your life that would have caused you to feel even more fear. There would have been people in your life that would have been ultra paranoid who would have kept 
kept telling you why you should be afraid. You were probably watching the news all the time, etc., etc., and you would have had all these manifestations that would have been the result of that calibration of fear, or it would have been at least close to things on the consciousness scale around that emotion. And let's say you've had a waking up and you don't want to live in fear anymore, and you've gone up the scale and you're actually starting to live more from a place of, let's say, gratitude, let's say, acceptance and willingness, even love. Let's say you're actually vibrating in an inner world place from your kind of spiritual and mental planes of existence. Let's say that's where you're at now. However, your life is still feared with these results that came from being on a frequency of fear. So your results are still on that frequency of fear. Well, of course, things have to then be cleared out that represented that frequency of fear before the new things can come in that are more aligned to the frequency you're currently on. Now, here is the danger of what happens to most people and what trips them up. They elevate their inner world, which is what you need to do first to change things in your life. On the spiritual and mental plane, they elevate things in their life. Again, let's say, let's just call it gratitude. Let's say you're on the gratitude frequency while you were on the fear frequency before. What most people do is a storm comes up and starts removing things. The chaos, so to speak, comes up and starts removing things that were on the fear frequency because you're no longer on that frequency. What happens to most people is they get scared, they reattach to that previous frequency, and then their inner world goes back down to that frequency, and then the things that were being removed end up staying in their life because you're actually on that frequency once again. You have to understand that the universe is acting out the law of balance. And so it can balance in one of two ways. Either you move up and the stuff starts to be removed and you get scared and go back down and balance is maintained. Or you go up, the stuff starts getting removed and you embrace the storm and the chaos, knowing that it's for your good. You allow it to be removed, you stay up here, and then it balances by giving you a new level of events, circumstances, people, etc. in your life that match and are balanced to that new frequency that you're on. So you're starting to get the picture and how powerful this actually can be. Now you may be asking, and this is where the law of continuity comes in, well if that's the case, why doesn't the stuff just disappear from my life on the frequency that was the past and just kind of reappear immediately with this new frequency I'm on? And this is where the law of continuity comes into effect. You see, there is a time delay between the spiritual, the mental, and the physical, and of course the delay is mainly from the physical because of the law of continuity. Imagine a movie where the character kind of just goes from one thing and it goes through the hero's journey in the next scene, right? And just instantaneously is this new person that has new things in their life and new experiences and et cetera, et cetera. Well, it would completely take you out of the illusion of the movie. And it's the same in life. You know, if we look at life as a game or as a movie and you're on kind of the movie set of your life, you can't just go from A to B within two seconds because it would break the flow and kind of the illusion of the whole reason we're even here. We're meant to experience things. We're meant to learn lessons and gain tools and be equipped for whatever the next phase of our life is. If we could just snap our fingers and boom, go from poor to rich, immediately it would break the game. If we could go from unhealthy to healthy within a day, it would break the game, etc., etc. So there is a time delay where you need to be in the inner world, in that place, in that frequency long enough for the physical to catch up. And there is even a time frame that is scientifically proven, and it's called the quantum to Newtonian transition point that basically states that it takes about eight to, or six to eight weeks of consistent particle flow for dramatic changes in the physical to occur. And I mentioned dramatic changes. So if you're able to maintain your inner world at the frequency you want it to be in, if you're able to give more loyalty to the vision than the physical senses or the circumstances for six to eight weeks, radical changes will start happening in your life. But the storm will be there. The chaos will be there. And it will be determined on whether you can embrace the storm or you're gonna cower and go backwards and turn around because of the storm. So this so-called chaos is actually not bad at all. We just label it as chaos because when anything we deem as negative happens in the physical world, we think it's a bad thing. But what if life is simply taking something away from you that is no longer aligned so that an even greater thing can come in? What if that relationship that has actually been mediocre or has been breaking down this whole time is being finally taken away because the love of your life is right around the corner? Maybe it's that job 
that has just been randomly removed as you do this work because your dream job or the path you need to go down that you're going to love is right there and you're so ready for it, but we got to get this mediocre job that's been holding you down that's an energetic anchor in your life out of the way and we can't move on until we do. And I'm going to even give you an example of a powerful way in which this happened in my life and it actually involves a job. It involves my vocation. I had another business, and I'll even flash it on screen, and it's still up, but I don't actively do anything with it anymore, called Simply Soccer. And this is a business I absolutely loved. I created it from the ground up, built a channel around it, built a business, and I was very happy doing it. But over the years, as I started experiencing new things, and I started to really awaken in different ways, I fell out of interest with it and wanted to pursue more stuff like I'm doing now. Many times I went back and forth on letting it go. So I would vibrate at a certain level where Simply Soccer just couldn't exist in my life anymore, something I was active with, it, but then I would get scared because maybe the finances would go down or something else would happen, and then this business I was trying to build would be slow. It would be stagnant. It wasn't growing. And I did this a few times before I finally said, I have to go all in on the thing I actually want to do. That's a 10 out of 10 for me, and I have to be okay with letting go of the thing that honestly is now like a 7 out of 10 in my life. And so I did that, and within a few months of actually doing that, this business started to explode. But it couldn't happen and wasn't happening all those times I kind of, you know, put half my body in the water or dipped my toe in the water. It only happened when I put myself on that frequency and I stayed there when the storm of the finances started happening or the storm of things, the videos not growing or whatever else it was or the business not being there right away. I embraced that storm where before I ran away from it, when I ran away from it, nothing changed. When I embraced the storm, things changed radically and it was for my greater good. But I had to let go of something that was actually pretty good and something I actually enjoyed, but it wasn't my highest thing to do at that moment. It was a seven out of, a t uh, seven out of 10 or an eight out of 10 on a good day that was getting in the way of a 10 out of 10. So this is going to be very quick and then we're going to get on to, to uh, tools after this that are going to help you embrace the bends. And I hope this is all making sense, right? And when this chaos comes up, you're aligned and this chaos comes up, it is so crucial to embrace the bends because the chaos will be there. And to actually get excited when the chaos comes up because when you get excited and you can celebrate it knowing that around the bend that you're currently go through, going through or the storm you're going through is a whole new level of reality for you, you can start getting excited going like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, it's removing this, it's removing this is what's going to come in its place. I don't know, but I know I'm excited because I know I'm going in the right direction. I'm in the right river and the universe has my back. And we'll get into that in just a second. But here is really the magic key. And I don't expect everyone watching this or you watching this to fully take this on board. So you can take it with a grain of salt or take it on board as right now. Um, you can take it with a grain of salt. You can completely throw it out. But for some of you, you might hear this and go, you know what? I get it. I'm going to run with it. And this is the master key to reality creation. This seriously removes so many blocks, will clear so many of your blockages and resistances and allow you to create with your full abilities. And it is taking 100% responsibility for everything in your life. Even the things you once thought was someone else's fault, even the things that you're like, that surely can't be my responsibility. The moment you can take responsibility for everything in your life and admit that you created all of it, that you came in here wanting these experiences, some of them, right? Or that you created or co-created these experiences with whoever else is in your life, etc. The moment you can do that is the moment you can create reality at the highest level. Again, some people will get offended when I say that. Some people will be, you know, even with me kind of prefacing this with, you don't have to take it on board, might put in the comments, how dare you? But if you really want to create reality at the highest level, this is what must be done because this removes any shred of victimhood in you and fully allows you to be empowered because again, victimhood disempowers you, which is why there are so many people who are part of the parasitic elite class that want to disempower you by making you a victim or thinking you're a victim or getting you to blame one group or another for your problems or even blaming them. They don't care as long as you're in victimhood. And so it's just something I would invite you to think about and see if you can just continually take more and more responsibility for your reality because the more you do, the more more you empower yourself more and more and more to create in beautiful ways. 
Now, for those of you who are ready to let go of all victimhood, take full responsibility and unlock your true potential as a reality creator, get amazing results, um, and so on, and you're really tired of waiting for results and want to get the pa on the path of real, lasting change, you know, you're fed up with trial and error and going forwards and backwards and not knowing how to embrace the storm and not having accountability, then I would check out our program EMF where we have helped thousands of people to do this and help them get insane results. But don't take my word for it through the first link in the description. We will show you some of the results that people have gotten, and it's a ton of people in going through this program, teaching them how to take full responsibility to tap into their reality creation powers fully and powerfully. Um, in that video, I go over how this process works, how this program works, what it does, why it works, and so on. And if you think it's something that's really going to benefit you, and you're just ready to transform now again without trial, trial and error and going it alone and being in the dark about all this stuff, you can watch that video and then apply for the program to be considered for it, hop on a call with me to see if it's right for you. So let's go over some tools that are going to be very helpful as you're going through this process. And this is one I've given before, but we call them amalgams. And essentially an amalgam is something you're going to say either inwardly or outwardly that's going to harshen the blow of the storm when you're in it. It's essentially something that's going to remind you of a truth or something you want to align to when the kind of your ship on the on in the water on during the storm is kind of rocking back and forth and the rain is very heavy and things are, you know, from a circumstantial standpoint, not looking great. It is essentially a phrase you can say that's going to dispel negative energy so that you can understand that this storm is not here to beat you up or victimize you. This storm is actually doing a lot of good in your life. An example of this is, you know, the universe always has my back or things are unfolding for me and for my greater good. Another one can be, you know, I don't know why this is good, but I know it's for my greater good. Ultimately, I know it's for my greater good. And I'll put a list up of certain amalgams you can use. I recommend finding three, and you can make up your own too, three that resonate with you, memorizing them, and when you're starting to feel kind of a little bit victimized, to use them. And when you get really good at this, you'll, you'll realize how cool it is that you can dispel the negative feelings of victimization in the moment with these phrases. And so come up with three or choose three that I've given you. Um, you know, I always like to say it'll be this or something better or something positively amazing is unfolding for me right now. Um, you know, those are a couple of my favorites or another one I really like is I'm thrilled just to be a part of whatever it is um, regardless of the outcome. So for example, if I'm getting really outcome dependent and maybe things aren't moving, there's a bit of chaos, they're slow, there's snagnation or whatever, I'll be like, you know, I'm really thrilled to be a part of whatever it is, um, regardless of what the outcome will be. Another really good tool is to understand that, again, this so-called chaos is actually feedback, and there are massive, amazing golden lessons contained within these, uh, this chaos or these, this so-called negativity. And so I have a mentor who says that when you fall on the journey of life and you scrape your knee, start digging for the gold, because there is invaluable advice when these things are happening that can completely change you, that can completely help you move in the direction you want to go or show you something that was in your blind spot that you weren't seeing that you can now see and fix or have a solution to or work towards. And so I'm not going to go too deep into this because I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but when you're on this journey and you scrape your knee, start digging for the gold. This next one I'm going to give you, and this is something we have our EMF clients do pretty early on, uh, and I'm going to give it to you here. Now, obviously, as they're going through the program, usually they have more of these things come through, but I'm going to give you the ideas so that you can utilize it in your own life, and it's called the Journal of Positive Confirmations. You see, a lot of times we have trouble, especially from the mind part of ourselves, the ego part of ourselves, in, in believing a lot of this information, and if we don't believe in it, we're not going to act upon it, and it's the application application of it that's actually going to bring about results. And so a journal of positive confirmation is when you see something in your life happening that corresponds to what I'm saying here and these principles, you're going to connect the dots by writing it in a journal. You see, these things happen non-linearly, which is to say they happen in ways that we do not expect. You know, breakthroughs have to come out of left field or else it couldn't be a breakthrough. You can't force your way into a breakthrough or force your way into like a transformation, let's say. You can follow a system that facilitates that, but you can't force your way into it from your head or plan it out. It's something that when you're doing the right things kind of comes out of left field. And so a journal of positive confirmation 
is you capturing these moments, which is going to help your mind to connect the dots and be like, hey, when we do this inner work, it seems that a lot of good things happen in our physical realm. Or hey, when we embrace the storm, it seems there's always these amazing life lessons and physical manifestations and things on the other side of it. Hey, when we left that thing that we knew that wasn't aligned and allowed the old to be cleared out, this new level in that area started coming in. These are the things you want to jot down on a small and a big scale. Nothing is too small here to jot down if you think it is relevant to jot down. And what you're going to start doing is having a collection of these instances that's going to start showing your brain, hey, wait a second, there's something to this. This is not just a coincidence. These things keep happening again and again. And it is providing that evidence that sometimes the rational not mind needs so that it can get on board with this stuff, uh, stuff and be in coherence with your heart, with your soul, with your gut, with your instincts, with your intuition. And so this is such a crucial practice space because again, so many of us have been taught to only think linearly even though life is nonlinear. And so we have to train ourselves, especially our mind, even though deep down we know and feel the truths of these things, we need to show our mind sometimes, hey, guess what? These things are real, they just happen in a way that we least expect, which means we can't think our way into them. Now, there is something I mentioned in this video that is so crucial to also understand called the law of balance, which is the predominant law of the universe. This is where embracing the chaos really comes into play and understanding this will show you why when doing that, it actually changes your life radically. So I'm going to give you a video right here to explain the law of balance, how to apply it, gives you some more tools on how to apply it effectively and understanding the law of balance and applying it is going to change everything in your life.